Choip, choip, choip. Choip, choip, choip. It's actually quite refreshing to hear retro music playing in a game that was made around that time. Welcome to the sort of nondescript mashup of around 80s era sci-fi movies. Aliens, mutants, clones, grungy futuristic cities, a game show involving killing, strange bureaucracy to boot. Your memory was erased and now you have to regain it using a machine. Now go, save humanity. It's a fun hodgepodge of visuals and scenario. But consequently, the story is very functional and cliched. Especially since there isn't much of it. Pronouncing the issue? Visually, it's definitely showing its age. It's very TV game. But still enjoyable, with good design. Detailed jungle and alien world stills. And as said, the city had seen better days. And at the very least, the enemy design was quite inventive when it came to the slime enemies. How they pudding about is sublime. It is a cinematic platformer, so it's more detailed than other platformers of the era. It has a slower pace, and at least sometimes it feels like it has more in common with an adventure game. With fair story-based gameplay and detailed stills. The fact that this game is a cinematic platformer is probably its largest draw. There really aren't that many of them. Seemingly ending at Oddworld. But some of you may want to include stuff like Limbo. The gameplay is fun. Climb ledges, jump, shoot, roll, run. But it is very deliberate, even by this deliberate genre standard. Some of the game's elements are maybe even clunky. And that harshness mainly applies to the combat. Every confrontation is best if planned out, but even then, if you're too slow or your button presses don't register, you'll experience frustration. Fortunately, there's a rewind function, which I assume they added with this re-release to cater to a more modern audience, who want to pull out less hair, and even then I was sometimes kind of stuck, and didn't have enough time to spare in the rewind machine forcing me to load, and since some of the required actions are quite difficult, sometimes I would prefer to sacrifice one of my shields, effectively your hit points, rather than do something properly. After this arduous process, it turns out I could have just come in from above. But even with some of the frustration and some of the clunk, it was still quite a fun game. In spite of me having to look through a walkthrough now and then, the game does not hold your hand. But in all fairness, one of the occasions I went to the walkthrough was because I couldn't see a very visible elevator on the screen. And the other time I simply used a keycard in the wrong place. But that place was gonna blow up and I had to work fast. After blowing up so many times I just had to put it here. The game took me about 8 hours to complete. And it is cheap on Steam. 79 Rand full price, 15 Rand 80 on sale. That's 1 Rand 98 per hour of gameplay, which is quite good. But some of you will still resent that a game this old costs that much. And not all of you are as into gallivanting through gaming history as I am. But hey, I don't think I played this game when I was younger. This isn't just nostalgia. Or at most, I'm being nostalgic towards the genre of cinematic platformers as a whole. And some may find it a good sign that I enjoy this game without having the pleasant memories of it. They did add a few things to the game, such as unlockable real-world street art. I wonder what the people who lived here said about this. This is such vile graffiti, a stain upon our beautiful city. The Prince of Persia was better. The game also has quite the small download size, as it only takes up 204 megabytes on the hard drive. And it works on the war horse without incident? Perhaps obviously. And stereotypically it's okay for kids. Sure you shoot, but TV game death, and no blood. This game has solid, deliberate, pleasant cinematic platforming gameplay. And since the genre is so rare, that's a draw unto itself. Visually, it has a varied and decent design. A bit tropey, with all the sci-fi elements coming together. Maybe a touch all over the place, but still. Plus, great slime enemies. The game has good period-appropriate music. I think it was enhanced, but late 80s, early 90s, synthy, electro kind of stuff. And also, prepare, you will see some funny deaths. On the maybe side, the game's story is functional, quite tropey, cliche, and there isn't much of it. 
It's more like an excuse for the gameplay to exist, but maybe back in the day this was the pinnacle of gaming storytelling. And even when you're just playing to proceed, it genuinely feels as though you're working towards the story goals. Instead of just jumping around and shooting things, going from A to B. And the graphics are old. Some of you will find it charming, some of you won't. And also I needed a walkthrough, this game does not hold your hand. Sometimes it's easy to miss something that's right in front of you. The only real con here is that some elements of the gameplay are clunky and finicky, difficult, combat in particular. Sometimes it's just easier to have yourself get hurt and exploiting the temporary invulnerability, instead of doing it the proper skillful way. Plus, if the enemy attacks you at the right time and position, you could get stuck in a damage loop. Come on, play it. See this dystopian future, where the job center offers you escort missions, instead of temp work. Before, after, before, after, before, after. Welcome to another world. I just can't be more specific than that. No one ever speaks. But there are aliens, blood sport, and very unimaginative uniforms. Are they bicycle cops? Visually, this game is great. It was remastered. So now it has smoother bits and an angular polygonal quality. But if you prefer the original visuals as seen here, they're available at the push of a button. I love the color palette, purple, beige and black, and sometimes a stained glass window is thrown in for a splash of color. A really well designed alien world. Advanced, but not some sort of sci-fi fest. Technology built into stone. A barren, dangerous land with weird creatures. That seems rather pleasant if some bits are a bit illogical. What on earth do they teach for town planners? The story is relayed more through the action than the narrative. Because as said, no one talks. You see the aliens' recreational and penal systems, quite opposite ends of the spectrum, and you're a fugitive escaping their grasp, aided by your fellow prisoner. There are a few laughs, and in this case, a lack of an overt narrative is probably beneficial. It is the fairly cliched scenario of a prison break, after all. That may have made it more cliché. Instead, you get immersed in this world. And that's lovely, you're just trying to escape a world you don't understand, where the inhabitants treat you like a ragdoll. With very little help and no instruction. Probably how it would be if this actually happened to you. You just move forward and hope for the best. Gameplay-wise, the game is good as well. It's platforming, also quite deliberate. Expect similarly funny deaths ahead. Except more cinematic. Also no hand-holding here, either. There are one or two situations that require fairly obscure solutions, that are very difficult to figure out, at the very least what you have to do here. Once again, the combat is a bit finicky. You have to be quick and shoot first. One shot, one disintegration. For both you and the enemy. Otherwise make a shield before their lasers hit you. Thrown to the mix to you figuring out the correct positioning. And after a few tries you ought to get it right. Although some situations are still quite difficult. There are, once again, frustrating moments. But it's still very fun. It is very short though. It took me two hours to complete. But it is cheap on Steam. 79 Rand full price, 15 Rand 80 on sale. Ugh, that's 7 Rand 90 per hour of gameplay. Which is quite bad. This game is a rather decadent suggestion. So this one is a buy if you really want to see some gaming history and experience the pleasures of a rare genre, the cinematic platformer. Or if you have the money and want something artsy and weird. But at that length, it's essentially a harder version of a film. The download size is actually kind of small, as it only takes up 703 megabytes on the hard drive. Although maybe that's a bit big for a game that's only 2 hours long. And also it works on the warhorse. And I suppose it's okay for kids. You disintegrate aliens with a laser. Okay, there's one possible cinematic where you see blood from a scratch that an alien slug gives you. 
And okay, there's another scene where you crash into an alien bathhouse and you see a portion of alien butt crack. But the law of kids can definitely handle it. The game has great visuals and color palette. At worst it has the odd strange angle or visual. It has a pretty good story for a game that only tells it through visual cues. But if you want to be a bit more harsh and honest, the prison break is an oversaturated scenario in modern media. And perhaps if the game doesn't count as having a great story, at the very least it counts as having great world building. It's a well designed alien world. And the game has good, deliberate cinematic platforming. Still a unique genre. But on the maybe side, it doesn't hold your hand, I'm sure you will get stuck once or twice. And on the con side, it has very rigid, inflexible combat. A common issue for this rare genre, especially back in its earlier days. Come on, play it. Play both of these games for the simple fact that they're cinematic platformers. And play this one specifically to learn the true method for efficiently moving through air vents. Thanks a lot, Hollywood, for teaching me that it's crawling. When the correct answer is sideways rolling. Ah! Choip, choip, choip. Choip, choip, choip.